Welcome to this uh, Cardiac Imaging Agora webinar. I'm going to talk about cardiac CT tips and tricks. My name is Marco Guglielmo. I'm a cardiologist. I work in the Department of Cardiovascular Imaging of the Centro Cardiologico Monzino in Milan, Italy. I'm going to uh, divide this presentation into two parts. The first one is how to prepare the patient to get the best possible images. The second one is dedicated to the challenging patient. The reverse patient and the arrhythmic patient. So you know that cardiac CT is really a highly uh, demanding uh, technology because we wanted to freeze the heart. We wanted to freeze the coronary arteries, which are very small structures. So we need a high spatial resolution, but also they are in continuous movement. So we need a high temporal resolution as well. And uh, uh, we get to the patient contrast agent, uh, and we need a uh, high contrast resolution, and all of this preserving uh, the ALARA principle, as low as reasonably achievable um, uh, radiation dose. With the newer scanners, uh, we have improved uh, dramatically the quality of the images, uh, um, but uh, you know that no matter how good is uh, your scanner, it's uh, crucial, it's fundamental to prepare the patient before the scan if we wanna get nice images. So it's important, first of all, to um, get all the training. It's important uh, to ensure that uh, the thorax uh, is uh, still uh, during the acquisition. And also it's important to observe the fluctuation in heart rate and rhythm during the breath holder exercise to see during uh, end inspiration, uh, which is uh, the um, heart rate, because uh, that is the phase uh, when uh, we are going to acquire the images. To improve uh, um, the temporal resolution, uh, we have to uh, prolong as much as possible diastole because we know that the acquisition of the images uh, happen in a very small amount of time from end systole to end diastole of the coronary of the uh, cardiac cycle because uh, this is the part of the cardiac cycle where coronary arteries are still. So uh, our target uh, must be less than 65 BPM or uh, even better, less than 60 BPM. To obtain this goal is uh, crucial to give uh, um, beta blockers to the patient. So we use uh, usually intravenously metoprolol five minutes before the scan. But uh, if the patient has contraindication to beta blockers, eva bradin should be administrated. But this means that the patient has to be prepared before the scan uh, with uh, an administration of uh, EVA bradin uh, twice a day for three, five days before the scan. We want also to improve uh, spatial resolution. And uh, uh, as uh, the coronary arteries are very small structure, it's important to make them bigger. And uh, uh, it's possible uh, through the use of nitrates. Uh, we use uh, um, lingual spray five minutes before the scan, and it's proved that this improves the diagnostic accuracy of computer tomography. It's important also to have a high contrast resolution, and uh, it's important to use uh, the right injection protocol uh, to get the uh, images uh, with a high intraterial pacification. Contrast agent uh, with a high iodine concentration should be used uh, with an injection rate uh, between 5 to 7 milliliters per second. And it's important uh, to have a biphasic injection uh, with a contrast agent uh, followed by normal saline in order to um, empty the right side chambers and to avoid uh, beam hardening artifacts uh, due to the presence of a contrast agent on the right side of the heart. It's important to get images like these ones uh, on uh, uh, your right hand side uh, with a nice uh, coronary opacification. Uh, because if we get images like these ones uh, on your left hand side, the uh, diagnostic accuracy is really poor and uh, we uh, risk to miss important information, we risk to miss plaques. There are many parameters that influence those exposure for our patient. Uh, we know that modern scanners uh, have improved uh, um, this, uh, uh, this thing, uh, have improved the, the uh, 
those exposures uh, for the patients that, that have been reduced uh, importantly. There are many parameters uh, that we can use to reduce uh, the um, radiation dose, but uh, one of the more important uh, is actually how we acquire uh, the images uh, with uh, ECG gated. Because uh, we, if we use a retrospective ECG gated, uh, that was uh, the um, type of acquisition uh, more common uh, with uh, all the scanners uh, we acquire throughout all the cardiac cycle. With modern scanners, we uh, often use a prospective ECG gated, uh, and uh, it's possible, thanks to wide coverage, to acquire in just one uh, heartbeat all the entire volume of the heart. And uh, it's possible also to uh, choose just one phase, for instance, the 75% phase of the cardiac cycle uh, to reduce uh, um, the, um, the radiation dose for our patient. But uh, for doing this, uh, is uh, uh, fundamental to reduce as much as possible the heart rate of the Patient. This is a, a nice case of a young patient with a BMI of 22, in which uh, we could use a very low um, tab current and tab voltage, uh, but more importantly, we used, because the heart rate was less than 60 BPM, the acquisition in just one phase of the cardiac cycle with a prospective acquisition. And this means 0.63 millisievert of radiation dose. So the message is, if you wanted to get uh, nice images and if you wanted to reduce uh, the radiation dose, it's important, first of all, uh, to reduce heart rate and to use the beta blockers. Moving to the uh, revascularized patient, uh, actually the patient with the bypass grafts uh, is not so difficult to, to evaluate. The thing to keep in mind is uh, that we have uh, to uh, extend the field of view superiorly to the level of the clavicle if there are grafts. And also it's important uh, to give a right amount of contrast agent, uh, not 50 to 60 as we usually use uh, in uh, uh, just coronary, native coronary arteries, but uh, from 70 to 80 milliliters of contrast agent. Uh, Rafts uh, are actually the ideal vessels because they are larger, they move uh, less and they have less calcification compared to native arteries. This is a nice example uh, of a left in internal mammary artery on the left anterior descending artery. The um, graft is patent, the anastomy is, is good, and also the uh, distal runoff uh, uh, is uh, very good. There are uh, two um, venous grafts which are uh, occluded, and this is uh, uh, possible to uh, observe here at the level of the aorta because we see uh, these two points uh, which are um, occluded grafts. This is an example, a patient with a, a sick graft, a sick venous uh, graft, which has an important reduction in the uh, diameter and uh, um, the uh, disease of the graft is confirmed at the invasive coronary angiography. It's important to keep in mind that uh, the distal anastomosis uh, um, can present uh, artifacts uh, due to uh, metallic clips uh, that keep uh, blooming. But generally speaking, uh, graphs are easily to be imaged. Uh, um, it's uh, a little bit difficult uh, to see the distal runoff, uh, the native uh, artery after the graft, but with newer scanner also the distal part is usually visible. For sense, the things are more complicated. This is a case of a stent on the left main and with a bifurcation on the left anterior descending artery, left sir. They are uh, patent and this patency is confirmed on invasive coronary angiography. This is another case uh, with uh, an occlusion uh, of the stent for a diffuse uh, uh, intrastent breast stenosis uh, on uh, LAD stent. Another case uh, with a uh, uh, 
focal severe restenosis uh, of the distal ledge of the stent uh, uh, previously implanted on left anterior descending artery. And here you can see um, um, severe restenosis uh, on the proximal edge uh, on uh, ascent on the right coronary artery. Okay, nice images, uh, uh, but uh, the reality is that uh, very often uh, we see blooming. We see images like this, uh, in which uh, uh, it's very difficult to see if uh, there is or no restenosis. Uh, blooming uh, is uh, a condition in which the struts appear to be thicker causing an underestimation on the scent lumen, and it's due to partial volume averaging, to dim hardening, but also it's due very often to motion. So again, especially if the patient has a sense, it's important to reduce the heart rate. The stents are not all equal because uh, uh, there are stents built with uh, materials uh, with a high um, atomic number like tantal, which are very difficult to be visualized, while uh, uh, stents uh, built like, for example, in cobalt chromium, are built with materials uh, which give uh, less blooming and the lumen than uh, of the vessel is uh, <clears throat> more easily evaluated. It's important also to give uh, a good opacification and it's important uh, uh, to give a right amount also of kilo voltage because the stents uh, have the same behavior actually of the heart bones. So uh, they follow this kind of curve for attenuation and as uh, the uh, usual range of uh, CT X-ray is this one, uh, we have to move uh, from the higher uh, part uh, of the scale uh, towards uh, 120 kilovolts uh, if we wanna get nice image of the lumen of the vessel because uh, uh, the curve uh, uh, with the 120 kilovolt uh, is uh, uh, here. So uh, with the newer scanners, actually, the stents are more easily visualized um, because uh, newer scanners have a uh, a uh, better uh, spatial and temporal resolution. But uh, it's important uh, to keep in mind uh, that uh, only, uh, only uh, large stents, uh, stents with a uh, diameter that is uh, more than three millimeters, uh, are more easily visualized. Actually, if you want to really improve the diagnosis of accuracy in stents uh, and we have a modern scanner, a uh, thing to do is uh, use uh, um, the uh, CT perfusion because CT perfusion uh, can uh, improve dramatically the uh, diagnosis of accuracy in patients with scan. This is uh, an example of a patient with coronary arteries really difficult to be evaluated with a stent on LAD, with the signs of restenosis, but we can say actually if there are signs of restenosis or presence of blooming, uh, um, plaque on the wind distal part of the left cerc and another stent on the right coronary artery with a lot of blooming and difficult to say if there is restenosis or no. So we performed a, a, a CT perfusion and uh, at rest, uh, there are not uh, um, defect of perfusion, but uh, after administration of adenosine, uh, there was a comparison of this area here of uh, um, defect of perfusion uh, at the level of the anterior wall of the left ventricle, but also the level of the uh, mid distal part of the lateral wall of the left ventricle. And uh, uh, actually the patient had rest analysis uh, of the uh, LAD stent confirmed by invasive coronary angiography and another um, uh, stenosis at the level of the left cerc while the stents on the L right coronary artery were absolutely patent. For um, patient with arrhythmias, the things are also difficult because there are lots of artifacts due to movement. Uh, there are vendors uh, which give uh, um, um, arrhythmia management uh, algorithm. This is uh, 
for instance, uh, uh, um, uh, um, smart arrhythmia management algorithm from uh, GE. Uh, so it's possible, for instance, to avoid uh, the acquisition during an ectopic ventricular beat and acquisition then uh, on the next uh, cardiac cycle. With uh, modern scanners, it's uh, even possible to acquire during atrial fibrillation. So while in the past atrial fibrillation was an absolute contraindication to um, the uh, acquisition of a cardiac CT, now it's possible also to acquire in uh, atrial fibrillation, but uh, it's possible because uh, actually there are also intracycle motion correction uh, algorithms uh, like uh, snapshot feeds, uh, which uh, uh, process uh, the images uh, during the post-processing uh, and characterize vessel motion uh, uh, using uh, close uh, cardiac phases. Uh, this is an example, a uh, uh, patient uh, with a uh, uh, not a variable coronary arteries uh, for movement uh, with the uh, application of intracycle motion correction that uh, the uh, coronary appear normally. In this uh, other example, there is a patient with a diffuse uh, um, pathology with a, a diffuse uh, cassitic flux. It's difficult to say in this case uh, if the uh, stenosis are important or not, because there are lots uh, of movement artifacts. After the application of the uh, algorithm of the intracycle motion correction, actually the uh, vessel uh, becomes uh, evaluable. So uh, in the proximal part of the list, the plaques are eccentric and not, uh, um, and there are not uh, stenosis uh, which are very important. So, uh, to conclude, it's important always to prepare the patient to cardiac CT. It's important to uh, improve special resolution with nitrates, uh, and it's fundamental if you want to get nice images uh, uh, and also to reduce the dose for the patient to uh, control the heart rate with the biota blockers uh, and evaporating. It's important to use uh, a right uh, um, a protocol for uh, injection of the control agent. There are difficult patients, especially uh, the patient with sense and the arrhythmic patient. For the sense, it's important uh, uh, to reduce the heart rate, uh, obtain a nice opacification, and use a kilo voltage of 120. But uh, it's important to keep in mind that we want to see really the, the stance, uh, uh, larger stance are more valuable. Also, newer scanners uh, improve the quality of the images uh, also in patients with the uh, uh, stance uh, and especially allow us to uh, use CT perfusion that improve the uh, diagnostic accuracy. For the uh, arrhythmic patient, uh, there are a specific uh, algorithm um, of acquisition and also of uh, post processing in neural scanners that allow to acquire, acquire the images even in atrial fibrillation. I want to thank you for the kind of attention and I want to. Uh, hope uh, uh, to see you in, uh, in Milan very soon. Thank you.